all info person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss the end of Gaia, one of the most incredible European Space Agency missions that for just over a decade now has been basically redefining our understanding of our own galaxy and helped us discover so much about the Milky Way that we actually never knew was even possible. And in some cases, it was even able to discover things we never knew the telescope could even achieve. And so in this video, let's basically do a kind of a summary slash review of what the Gaia telescope discovered so far, just because the mission itself was officially finished a few days ago from when I'm making this video. And here I guess let's start with a super brief overview. And so first of all, this mission was actually a continuation of the previous mission known as Hipparchos. This was the first such telescope launched back in 1989, and it conducted astrometric observations for approximately four years. This is where we get the famous Hipparchos catalog. But even back then, researchers started to plan a continuation, or essentially the next part, obviously involving better optics and better instruments. And this was the birth of Gaia, and so following a multi-year development period, it was officially launched in 2013. Here's one of the last pictures before the launch. And its mission was somewhat simple, but also somewhat complex. It would essentially spin in the way you see right here, in order to basically scan the entire night skies in these massive circles that it would be able to cover every six hours. And the point here was to basically conduct what's known as astrometry. Measuring the position, the distance, and the motion of each star with absolutely incredible precision. And so here it basically monitored each star at least 70 times during the first part of the mission. And then when scientists realized they can actually conduct even more observations, they did so again with many stars observed at least 140 times. And so over time it was able to observe approximately 2 billion different objects, many of them representing different stars, some representing different asteroids, and some even representing distant galaxies. But overall, it was able to cover approximately 1% of all objects in the Milky Way galaxy, which eventually resulted in one of the most incredible three-dimensional space catalogs ever made that basically contains over 1 billion astronomical objects, and objects for whom we know the exact distance, the exact velocity, and the exact position in the galaxy. But after 12 years of operation, on March 27, 2025, this mission was officially finished, or essentially ESA finally shut down the telescope, putting it into a kind of a passive mode. And though it's still able to communicate with planet Earth and is still going to be sending a lot of data back, now it's unable to do any actual observations simply because it's basically out of fuel. Although here it's important to know that, just like James Webb, this telescope is orbiting in one of the Lagrange points of planet Earth, referred to as L2. And though telescopes in this position do orbit an invisible point in the middle, they still require just a little bit of fuel to maintain their orbit or to sometimes reorient themselves in order to look at something else. And so after 12 years, this telescope ran out of fuel. And once that happens, in order to avoid any possible collision with planet Earth, the engineers have to push the spacecraft into its final orbit around the Sun. So basically here it's going to use the remnant of the fuel to boost into a solar orbit. But during these 12 years, it helped us discover so much. And like I mentioned, things we never even imagined or did not even think were possible. For example, one of the first major discoveries was in regards to the shape of the Milky Way. By observing just a few thousand stars, it was able to confirm that the Milky Way galaxy is technically not a flat pancake as we imagine it to be, but is actually a little bit warped and seems to possess a bunch of waves within it. This was very likely the result of previous collisions over the years. And it also seems to wobble just like you see right here. In some of the previous videos, we also discussed the discoveries in regards to the spiral arms, and here Gaia was also able to confirm additional spiral arms that we once again never knew existed. But when it comes to the reason for this unusual shape of the galaxy, this is actually where Gaia was so good at discovering the actual reasons. Because he was able to discover a lot of remnants of various collisions in the last 10 billion years, and even find actual individual pieces from those colliding tiny galaxies. Now, first of all, it was able to confirm the existence of a lot of different stellar streams. These are basically formations that seem to represent previous interactions with various galaxies that usually influence the larger galaxy by changing its shape and also introducing a lot of new matter inside of it and even introducing new stars. And here Gaia didn't just confirm the existence of several streams and their connection to various globular clusters, it also confirmed the existence of these two massive regions referred to as Shakti and Shiva that represent these humongous formations of stars 
that seem to have formed during one of the first collisions 12 billion years ago, essentially helping us understand how the galaxy started evolving early on. And this was discovered by observing a lot of different stars and their motion across approximately half of the galaxy. And then they discovered signs of one of the main collisions our galaxy experienced. An incredible merger between the Milky Way and the Gaia Enceladus galaxy, also sometimes referred to as the Gaia Sausage. With researchers even discovering the ancient core of the Gaia Sausage galaxy, visible as the cluster NGC 2808. And this merger very likely happened approximately 8 to 11 billion years ago, and involved a massive collision between stars and gas, roughly 50 billion solar masses in mass. This was very likely one of the last massive mergers before the galaxy finally stabilized, which eventually created the thick disk inside the Milky Way galaxy that seems to contain a lot of stars that came from the Gaia sausage. And it also added 13 globular clusters that are still orbiting the Milky Way today. But then a much more intriguing discovery was Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy. A really tiny satellite that's barely visible right there, that was officially confirmed by Gaia to collide with the Milky Way at least several times, with one of the major collisions approximately 4.5 billion years ago. And when this was discovered, researchers actually linked this collision to the potential formation of the solar system. In other words, today is believed that the collision between Sagittarius Dwarf and the much larger Milky Way potentially created a lot of overdensities, with one of them forming the solar system. So this might have been the reason we exist. With one of the last discoveries in regards to collisions being about what's known as the Virgo radial merger. This apparently only happened 2.7 billion years ago and potentially represented the last major collision between some kind of a small dwarf galaxy and the Milky Way. This was only discovered approximately 10 months ago. And specifically here Guy discovered that approximately 2.7 billion years ago, the collision with this dwarf galaxy very likely created a bunch of wrinkles inside the Milky Way that are still present in the galaxy today and are still influencing the motion of stars as they orbit the galaxy. And while one of these bizarre wrinkles or these unusual waves was officially discovered, confirmed and analyzed back in 2020 by the team from Harvard. Here we're talking about the discovery of the famous Radcliffe wave. We've actually talked about this very recently because there's been some additional discoveries, but in essence, there's this really massive wave extremely close to the solar system that seems to contain most of the regions producing new stars and that seems to represent a bizarre overdensity. And we also know that the sun seems to pass through this wave once in a while, which has been actually linked to potential climate change events, and so this is actually something that affects us as well. And though it's not entirely clear which of the collisions produced this bizarre wave, it's extremely likely the result of a previous gravitational interaction with something else. But not all discoveries were from the Milky Way itself. Some of the discoveries were from our neighborhood. Because here the data also discovered a lot of new stuff about dwarf galaxies around us. It actually analyzed at least 50 different dwarf galaxies around the Milky Way and discovered at least one dwarf galaxy we never knew existed. This was a barely visible galaxy, Antela 2, that despite being relatively large, is just extremely dim and was only detected because of the three-dimensional map created by Gaia. It's actually about 10,000 times dimmer than the Large Magellanic Cloud and seems to have the lowest surface brightness of any discovered galaxy to date. Then, super recently, researchers also created the largest 3D map of the interstellar dust in the entire Milky Way. Here this is a map showing us a radius of about 8,000 light years away from the Sun and it was created by looking at approximately 130 million different stars and observing their spectra. And so by seeing that in certain locations the starlight seemed to be a little bit different from other locations, researchers were able to combine this data to create the largest 3D map of the gas, which naturally would be impossible without the Gaia data and without these super accurate observations of individual stars. With many of these accurate observations also helping researchers calculate the overall mass of our galaxy, as well as the distribution of a lot of materials in a galaxy, including of course all of this dust. But since most of the observations here were focusing on individual stars and their motion, naturally it didn't take long to discover what's known as hypervelocity stars. Basically stars escaping the galaxy, or stars moving too fast compared to everything else. One of the recent videos in the description describes some of the most unusual discoveries, but in essence it looks like many of these stars, for some reason, are actually coming from the nearby Large Magellanic Cloud which suggested to researchers that maybe there is actually a hidden black hole there that seems to be throwing a lot of stars toward us. 
But then there were also some discoveries that absolutely nobody expected and they were only made because of the ridiculous accuracy produced by Gaia. Now here we have to understand how Gaia actually sees everything. It uses what's known as astrometry and it basically looks at super tiny deviations of motion of the star across the night skies by observing it up to 150 times. And so if there is a tiny deviation that doesn't make sense, it usually means something is in orbit here and we're just not seeing that something. And so as a result, there were five confirmations of actual exoplanets. This was naturally completely unexpected, but the last two planets, Gaia 4b and Gaia 5b, were only confirmed in February of 2025. Here this was a massive gas giant and some kind of a brown dwarf, which basically suggests that data from Gaia even contains signs of exoplanets that would not be discoverable otherwise. And the first one, Gaia 1b, was officially confirmed back in 2022. But then by using the same technique, Gaia discovered something that absolutely nobody expected. He was also able to discover hidden inactive black holes, with the first one now being called Gaia BH1. This is actually one of the closest black holes ever discovered, 1600 light years away from us. But it's not producing any emissions or any light, so it's only visible because the star seems to be in this unusual orbit. At the moment, two such black holes have been discovered and potentially confirmed. And that's of course the discoveries from outside of the solar system. It also made a lot of discoveries right here around the sun, with pretty much all of these discoveries being accidental. Here, Gaia discovered that many asteroids in a solar system seem to actually be binary. Or basically, these asteroids also seem to move around something invisible and are basically binary in nature. And specifically, it confirmed 350 individual moons in various asteroid systems. But many of these discoveries are still difficult to explain. And while well, for the most part, these were some of the biggest discoveries in the last 10 years. But here's the thing. Even though the mission itself, the scientific mission, has not been shut down, the data has not been processed yet. As a matter of fact, everything we've covered so far is technically only part of the Gaia Data Release 3, also known as DR3. And Gaia DR3 only became available 3 years ago. But the additional data is still there and has not been processed yet. And actually the next release, Gaia DR4, is supposed to come out sometimes in mid-2026. But Gaia was supposed to have 5 data releases and the 5th one is not coming until 2030. And so that means that we're going to be getting more studies and more discoveries for probably at least 6 to 7 more years as researchers analyze all of this data and as they essentially discover new things in many of these additional observations that will only become public in the next 5 years. And that means that we're going to be hearing about Gaia discoveries for many, many years to come. The mission might be over, the telescope itself might be shut down, but the science it collected is going to be teaching us about the galaxy and the universe for decades to come. Which technically makes this one of the most incredible missions ever and one of the most incredible space telescopes any organization ever launched. And so this was an extremely influential telescope. But when it comes to the next mission, or I guess the Gaia successor, well, it's probably not going to happen for a pretty long time. There has been some talk and some planning on what's known as the Gaia Near or Gaia Near Infrared Telescope, but if it does happen and if it launches, it's not going to be before 2040s. By then, I expect to be a grandpa and will probably be way more wrinkly. But if it does happen, it's basically going to be kind of like James Webb, mostly focusing on infrared light and conducting astrometry in a very similar way to Gaia. And so on that note, I guess congratulations to everyone involved in this mission, and I'm definitely looking forward to future discoveries and future studies based on a lot of data that's going to be coming out. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who doesn't know about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.